Joining me now, the former Chief Minority Counsel of the U.S. Senate Permanent Subcommittee on Investigations, Jeff Robbins. So, Jeff, what do you make of the Attorney General's response? Hi, Kira. You know, it's often said that the best defense is a good offense, and what we have here essentially is people who think that it's perfectly okay for a president to commit multiple violations of the Espionage Act and steal nuclear secrets are outraged because a president's son uh, in the middle of the throes of addiction and a psychiatric breakdown, failed to file tax returns and is only getting probation. So the predictable people will say the predictable things. Fact of the matter is, as ABC has reported, this is a uh, investigation that was conducted for three years by the Trump Justice Department, which was wishing and hoping and praying to quote Dion Warwick that they would find something that was a lot more serious than this. Then followed up by two years of investigation by a Trump appointed. U.S. attorney who concluded there was nothing more than this. And now apparently we're going to have a Trump appointee on the federal bench pronounced sentencing. So it hardly seems like much of a sweetheart deal. Well, that was my next question. I mean, is are you saying that there is proof to kind of back up what Republican lawmakers are saying that Hunter Biden got a sweetheart deal here? Well, thus far, we seem to have evidence to the contrary, because as I indicated, and as ABC has reported, this was an investigation that was conducted for five years by a, a battery of FBI agents and prosecutors who were looking for evidence that was a lot more serious, if I may say so, than this. And apparently, evidently at least, they did not find anything that warranted more than this. If there's evidence that, uh, that the FBI and the Trump Justice Department and the Trump U.S. attorney uh, found uh, information that was more serious than this, we don't know about it. And so on the face of it, at least, it appears as though he failed to file his tax returns. He failed to pay taxes. He then paid the taxes in full with all the penalties that the IRS can muster, and the IRS can muster a lot of penalties. And he's not going scot-free. He's getting probation. Uh, and this is the kind of outcome, kind of result, which frankly is well within the, the realm of normal for cases like this, particularly when you factor in the circumstances of the individual uh, who committed this particular crime. But now comes the congressional probes, right? He's not totally out of the woods. Oh, he is so far from out of the woods that it's not even funny. This is like catnip uh, to a cat. Uh, there'll be uh, cries of, as there already have been, sweetheart deals and inside jobs. And there'll be cries from individuals who, frankly, uh, are doing their best to backpedal, if not overlook altogether, the actual indictments of crimes which, let's face it, are a little bit more serious even than failing to file tax returns, which is not to say that that's not a serious crime. We're talking about obstruction of justice, violations of the Espionage Act, uh, uh, retention of, of secret documents, pilfering of secret documents. Uh, it's a lot worse than that which we're talking about here. And yet you have these same people who profess to be so outraged uh, who, uh, by this probation, uh, doing their best to sort of block uh, any discussion of what are, you know, pretty serious apparent crimes, at least charged by the Justice Department against former President Trump. Jeff Robbins, thanks so much. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.